Hi everyone, Albert here. This is my solo walkthrough and guide to the level 14 heroic quest, Fleshmaker's Laboratory, on the Elite difficulty. Enjoy! To complete this quest, you're going to need a second player, or a pit, or a hireling. I'm going to recommend this level 16 barbarian. But anyone should work. The quest is located in the Upper Necropolis. The epic version is located up top. Standing at the entrance, you can see on the map the entrance to the quest. It's basically we're going to run off to the left of the map and then we'll follow up a path. This is the closest to the entrance and it's the easiest to get to. This right over here is the optional encounter but I'm not going to spend time on it right now. Once you get to the top, you can take a right and you just follow the path. Also, there'll be some video insight by me at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Make sure to open up your hireling at the start of the quest, since there's no way to get back to the start of the quest without using Dido. Later we have the option to walk down this hallway. We're coming from its exit. This drop down is a point of no return. So once you fell down over here, you can no longer get to the, the entrance to the quest and summon your hireling. That's why I said, make sure you don't forget. This quest is pretty simple, relatively speaking, but the hard part is the end. This has an end sequence who requires, well, it's supposed to have five players and it can easily be done with two players. Doing it with the hireling is pretty tricky. So I'll be showing my method at the end of this video. Keep in mind that this will require some twitch skills and no lag, so if that's not your type, you should probably get a party or you need a few gold seal hirelings if you want to pull this one off. Here we get to encounter these flesh golems. Uh, if you take care to notice, you'll see that they all heal from electricity. 
This is inconsequential for regular players, but if your main focus is electricity, you're in some big trouble. So you must have some kind of way to either break the electricity immunity or you'll be continuously healing them and it'll drive you crazy. So keep that in mind that you must have some way to deal damage who's not just your electricity or be able to break electricity immunity. This passageway is where we were on the other gate, other side of the gate at the beginning. That means we were looking into this passageway before. You can see this is just a dead end. This is where the that cleric with his zombie minions were walking before. I believe these two spray traps, one of them is poison and one of them is acid. I think the first one's poison. Yeah. But you can just either time it or you can swim in the little water section to the right and not get hit at all. Here the way that we want to go is down. First we're going to have to go get a key. Here we've got the key, and also we've got this lever. I'm not sure what it does, but I think it momentarily dispels the acid and poison traps. I'm not sure though. Okay, to drop down over here, we pull this lever, it opens up the gate. Here you can see what the machine is going to do to you if you try to walk through it. There's a bunch of archers over here who snipe you. And if you've got any kind of ranged attack, you should probably get rid of them. Unless you're planning to run through the traps anyway. So it's pretty impossible when they're shooting arrows at you to try to disable these traps. It drives you crazy. Now you can either try to time these traps or if you get on the side over here you can use it to give you some extra height and get past it. Once you get to the center you can get these other two guys by turning around and firing at them. Again, if you don't have a way to disable traps, you can jump up over here and you can actually clear it by standing on top of the trap and get past the whole trap. Here there's two sides to this room and they're connected with these two small bridges. One kind of in the center and then there's one at the end. Next to the one at the end you have this lever that you can pull. This 
momentarily turns off these traps, these blade traps at the bottom. I've already disabled them, but if you've got a party and no trapper, you can send one person ahead to disable it for everyone else. Okay, now we have to go on those two different paths. First, I'm going to go down this little path over here. This actually loops back to the top. That means the door we jumped down before is not a point of no return. You can just double back through here. Also, there's a few extra monsters, so I'm going to try to go for conquest, so that's what this is about. Yeah, here we go. This is back to the intersection where before we jumped down. And that was where we got the key. It's very important to have an option to go get it. In case you forget the key, this is going to be your path to get back up and get the key. Now the way we want to go is at the corner of this room, this is easy to miss, there's a place where you can drop down. This is the door that requires the key. You can actually pick this, but it has a very high difficulty check. Again, if you forgot the key, you'll be able to climb back and use that passageway to get back up and get the key. Oops, forgot to put on my death ward. Here we've got these named bosses. We have to kill all of them. Killing all of them will open up the gate to continue. Basically, it's mandatory. You have to kill them to move on. You don't have to kill all the trash though, so only the named or orange named, whatever they are. The last apprentice falls I'm just going to check make sure I didn't miss anything in the room. One of these tables has a flesh golem that's sleeping on it. When you walk over, he stands up. But I guess I was already close enough to it, and I've already killed it. Whatever. Okay, let's move on. The end of this video requires me to have all of my speed boosts because I don't want to have to come back and recharge in the middle so that's why I'm resting. And if you're enjoying this video please hit like and subscribe. Thank you.
Once you defeat Edgar, you'll have access to Mintel. This door is an optional that we'll come back to at the end of the quest. It doesn't open now. First we've got this path that we have to go up to and we have these two rooms we have to pull. Every one of these corner sections, these bends in this tunnel, has these big lightning traps that will continuously fire. They, they have two effects. One, they damage you, and two, they heal the flesh golems. So if you're going to fight them, you can fight them in the little sections that connect in between. You are less likely to get hit, and so are the flesh golems, meaning they won't heal. But if you want to stay out of the trap, this is why I recommend standing. Alternatively, you can stand close to the door, but you still can get zapped by the, the lightning. You can see, I've got one of the lights turned on. And you go to the other side. Basically, exact same thing. You only need one player to pull both levers, but the whole party is going to have to go through one of these sides to get to the center room eventually. Well, okay, here we go. This is it. This is the final room, and this is the part of this quest who causes all the trouble when you try to solo it. So, first of all, you must have a hireling. If you forgot to summon him, well, you always have the option to buy one off the TDL store. I'm going to make sure he's buffed and he's got some electricity resistance. Here you can see I've got one who's a gold seal hireling. I could just summon him right here. Now there's endless spawning air elementals up here and you must go quick. Also they can blow you off and that's one of the really hard parts of this upcoming segment. Okay, so now up here we've got these runes. We have a total of five runes, and we have to pull all of them, activate them all, and have them all active at the same time to summon the final boss. So we're gonna pull, a, we're gonna have to pull all five of them, and I'm gonna have one of them for the hireling. So I'm gonna pull these, one, two, then three, and then four. I'm going to jump and catch the last one, and I'm going to get my hireling to pull the one over there. Now there is an option to get your hireling to push two, and to pull two, in which case you would pull the three on this side, and get your hireling to pull the two at the far end of the room. You want him to be able to run across straight in a straight line, so you would tell him to select one, pull it, when you start to run, pull the other three, and then you tell your hireling to put the second one. I don't know if this is easier or harder, but I'm going to be using the method where I tell my hireling to pull only one, and I'll be doing all four. Now, to do this, you're going to have to have some kind of fast movement speed. In this case, I don't have any special fast movement speed. I'm not monk or barbarian or anything fast. And all of my movement speed is coming from the boost that you get from falconry. So anyone can access it. Also, if you can see over here, there's invisible wall to block your arrows. 
I don't know who thought that this quest wasn't hard enough and decided to block it so you can't range all the monsters. Oh, uh, whatever. So you're going to have to either run to the section where those monsters are to clear them. So I'm just going to clear the ones in the middle and the ones where I'm going to need to start. So right now there's nothing in the middle and there's nothing standing over here. That's the two key points. I'm going to select the room, tell my hireling to go, get it. I'm just making sure that he's standing in a good range. Also, you can see over here I got hit with a gust of wind who makes me go slow. You need to wait for that debuff to run off because you're not going to make it if you're stuck on a debuff of slow. Okay. Again, make sure you select the right room for the hiling and activate it. As soon as he starts running towards it, then you go for it. Hit your speed boost and you can run off over here and you can make it towards the second room. Over here you're going to run to the third one. And then you're going to run, jump off the edge and get the fourth one. And if we did it fast enough, the there we go. Once you've pulled all five rooms at the same time, it summons the end boss. He's going to always blow you off, so you should run to the far corner of this map. I mean, sorry, far corner of this room and stand with your back towards the wall and that way you're not going to get knocked off a thousand times. And that's it. Pretty simple, straightforward and kill him. Now, I will say that it looks like it was pretty simple and straightforward, but it's not. And to make that point clear, well, stick around to the end of the video and I'll discuss it more. I think that without proper context, it would sound like I'm lying. So just, just stay to the end of the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. Here I got myself a sigil piece to complete my sigil. Yeah. Now I did mention before there was an optional and that's where we're going to be heading now. So you're going to have to head back through this lightning trap hallway. Well, all the lightning traps are off now because we turned off the lightning. Once we get back to this room, so we're going to go talk to Mentau again. Also, we get an optional shrine, so just in case you haven't subscribed yet. There you go. He opens up the way to the bottom and we're going to jump down to this optional. This is the optional special quest, so to speak, of this quest. There should be a higher drop rate for um, tome pages and shield parts. Now there's four traps over here, and if you can, you want to disable them as fast as possible. Because if not, you'll be continuously blasted with electricity traps. The electricity traps over here have two functions. One, they damage you, and two, they're going to heal this big gigantic army of flesh golems. And you're going to probably get overwhelmed. So, disabling the traps is key to successfully running this. Or you must have somebody with strong healing. I don't think you can do this with just a hireling to heal you, because chances are that the hireling is going to die in like one zap, and that's it. So there's a whole bunch of waves of flesh golems who continuously spawn. It's not endless, but they spawn pretty fast, so better be quick about trying to find the traps and disabling them. Also, I've noticed something interesting about the uh, electricity traps. There's a certain point where the there's an internal check to see if the trap is going to go off. And then there's a delay and then it goes off. So if you disable it during that delay, regardless if you disable it or not, the trap will go off. That means if, if we decided it was going to go off, the trap box was not disabled yet. So even though you've disabled it, 10 seconds later, it's still going to go off. So, you might be surprised. 
Another common strategy when doing this quest is just stand over here next to this door. You're kind of safe, not really, but you get damaged less and just let all the flesh golems come to you. I don't really need this strategy, I mean, now I've disabled everything, so it doesn't make any difference, but again, just for further reference. I'd like to point out just another thing about the the challenge of pulling on all five runes is if you're trying to go for a hireling to pull multiple runes you're trying to get your hireling to pull two so then you can actually set a shortcut to your hireling's shortcut bar that means you can just click a key that will be set to his activate in which case it should be easier again you're still gonna have to select a proper rune and that might be harder i rather give my hireling to do less work and do it more by myself versus trying to select the rune and click and tell the hireling to go pull it and hope that he does it and pulls it off. So My method might be harder but I think that once you get it down it's more consistent. Again, you should stick around to the end and get a flavor for what to expect when you try to do this for your first time. This character I'm playing right now is only a second lifer. So I did a hard run first and then I started to do my recordings on Elite. Yeah, so here's the chest with the higher chance, right? For dropping tone pages and shield pages. Also, you can just click on that portal to exit the quest, but I want to show the scorecard. Well, that's it. Just recall. Yep, and if you've enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. And now for all of you who have been waiting for the video insight, well, here we go. I think it would not be fair to make it sound like this was super easy. When I started trying to do this quest, I had placed my hireling to do the single rune, the one by itself, and then I tried to pull all four runes, but I changed the order up a bit. And you can see, it's taking me way more time. And the main reason is, I'm starting on the left side of the room and I have to jump to the center and then jump to the other side. I don't have a long jump. So this extra two jumps that you have to do waste a lot of time. As you can see I'm not very consistent and I'm wasting time on clicking the runes and I'm allowing too many of these air elementals to be around here and they keep on hitting me with this slow debuff. Here we go again. You can see though that incrementally I'm getting better at it and I'm moving faster from one to the other so definitely practice makes a big difference. Well again I didn't get it. Well here we go number four. Also I noticed that on elite it seems to go a little bit faster than on hard. When I tried this on hard it was like no problem whatsoever and when I tried it on elite well this keep on happening happening keep on messing it up and again eventually i realized that rather than jumping through the center i should just start from this side jump once and then i can run in a straight line and then jump again of course it took me time to start getting used to it had some mistakes to keep on happening. One of them was making sure that your hireling is actually pulling the switch and not getting blown off like this. Yeah. My second attempt at this, I forgot to bring my hireling, so the recording was going great, but I ended up having to stop, open up the DDO store and buy a hireling. So that was the end of that recording, but here, here's my attempts anyways. 
You'll notice I'm doing it much smoother now. I've also been making sure to clear out the air elementals in the center to make sure that I can get to it. And almost did it. Here we go again. I would say I did like 15 attempts overall, but here you only in this recording you only have like nine of them. But I can literally see how my overall performance is getting better. These are just consecutive attempts, one after each other. I keep on feeling like I'm getting it smoother and closer and closer. One thing I notice is that the hireling's rune is running out before I finish. So what I want to do is make sure I start before he finishes clicking his first rune to give me some extra time. Eventually I realized that if he stands right next to the rune, so then he instantaneously pulls it. So maybe I should try to get him to stand a little farther away. Here eventually I got it, but I already had to scrap this attempt. So that was that. Well, thank you very much for being a true fan, staying all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you in my next video. Bye.